Hello everyone and welcome back to another Apostles of Muchinjikwa podcast. I hope that everyone is keeping well and safe in these troubling times and let us all remember to keep each other in our prayers and to continuously seek the protection of the Lord while taking measures to keep ourselves safe. This week will be a further discussion on the Holy Spirit. Last week, I gave a small introduction of the Holy Spirit and the journey the Spirit is walking with us. This week, I'll be explaining the Holy Spirit in more detail. What is the price of the Holy Spirit? How many pieces of silver or gold should I pay to receive a portion of the spirit or a favor of from god if you look throughout the history of christianity you can see the issues of people seeking to purchase god's favor is not a recent occurrence you had people asking peter for portions of the spirit when they saw the works that he was doing to which he replied the works of the spirit cannot be bought People of God, do not covet the Holy Spirit, but instead pray and hold fast to the coming of the Lord. The signs of a holy man or woman is not in the ability to prophesy or to speak in tongues, but in their obedience to the Holy Spirit. It is found in their actions to their neighbours, in showing love to strangers, and to show forgiveness to those around them. An example of this can be found in the Apostles of Muchinjigwa. When the messenger, the founder of the church, was first given his mission by God, the Lord told him, and said that, I will show my works through you. One of the initial wonders that was performed was while he was praying with a group of women and he exercised a woman of some evil spirit that was within her. During this time she fell back and she hit her head on a rock and this, and she started to bleed from my head heavily. And as this was still in the 2000s, just at the beginning of his mission, he became afraid. What would people do to him if this woman died here? And it was at this time when he was afraid and worried that he heard a voice that spoke and said to him, hold her head and he did as he was instructed and then the wound closed up and the woman was healed and the group that was there was just astonished they were amazed and they started to tell people and to preach about this new man of God that had just recently emerged and it was through these initial wonders and through his teachings, his teachings, his heavenly teachings, that he managed to go from a single man preaching in an empty field to creating a movement with thousands of followers. And through doing God's work, he never charges for any of the works that he does. Nor should people be charged for seeking counsel from the Holy Spirit. No apostles of Muchinjikwa person, person of God or prophet, will ever charge anyone for the works of the Spirit. Even now in the world, you hear of pastors and prophets. They charge people for appointments or for prayers. This leads a question, 
is the blessing of the Spirit of God only reserved for those who can financially afford it? I believe not. Although this does not mean we are ignorant of how the world works, we understand the world that we live in. That for people whose sole purpose is to do the works of God, they also need to survive. They need basic human rights such as shelter, food, sanitation and education. Therefore, the church should work similar to what was given to the children of Levi. It is possible for the church or people to show their gratification to someone who's doing the works of God and this should somehow relate to how much work this person is doing for the organization or the people. It is not a measure of the spirit that they have. For example, if the prophet is, is working or the person of God is working for over 40 hours a week, going to see people, teaching them, praying for them, counseling them, then it is not unreasonable for them to be given a portion of the tithes that the church or the people collect so that this person can help to maintain a normal life just as everyone else in order to cover the basic human rights. But even though we believe that working in some sort of professional capacity is also good for personal development and helps to build the character of the person of God. You will understand the value of money and have greater appreciation of people's sacrifices when they give you anything so that you are able to carry on God's work. And if you look back in time, even the prophets of old, they would pray and help others, yet would find time to tend to their sheeps and work on their fields. This will help to explain my next point. The works of the Holy Spirit are not your own. You cannot take credit for the miracles that the Spirit has done as your own. Prophets and people of God must be able to clearly separate the works of God from their own egos for every works of the Spirit gives glory to God and we must give glory to Him. We must humble ourselves and instead increase our praise for being chosen to be servants to the Lord and for God allowing us to administer to His world through His Spirit. We should be grateful and we should show praise. So in the story that I mentioned about the woman who smashed her head on the rock, you can hear the separation of how the person of God who was afraid, worried and didn't know what to do. But the great comforter, the Spirit of God, spoke to him and it was that Spirit that's the one that performed the miracle and it was to him that he gave glory. So, if we take credit or payment for works that do not belong to us, are we not thieves trying to steal from the Lord and his people? And with that, I will end the section on the Holy Spirit. And I will say thank you very much for listening to the podcast for this week. We appreciate your views, your comments and your feedback. And for next week, we hope to speak on the topic of education within Masori, helping to answer questions such as, can apostles or mapostoi go to school? Can their children go to school? Do they have sort of homeschooling? So if you would like to raise any questions on this topic that you would like us to answer, or if you have any questions regarding any previous topics, please do not hesitate to contact us and hopefully we can answer your question. 
And with that, I say thank you very much and glory be to God.